Welcome to the M100 assembly instruction video. In the next few minutes, we'll show you step-by-step -step how to assemble the M100 water purifier. We begin with unboxing. The first thing you will find when opening the box is an instruction manual, zip ties, a pair of hoses, one water bottle for mixing salt water, the water purifier, 12 volt water pump, a bag of accessories, the heat exchanger and venturi, and also a connection tube for the venturi. The first step is to attach the input hose to the water pump. You can identify the input hose by the white bushing reducer at the end of the hose barb. Once you have those two things in hand, screw the water pump to the input hose clockwise. After that's finished, we're going to drop the water pump down into the tank, making sure to set the battery clamps off to the side. Next, we need to find our output hose and place the end that does not have a hose clamp into the tank. The next step is to attach the water purifier to the tank. Near the top of the purifier, there are rings on each side. We're going to need a piece of string or cord to tie to each ring. Once those are secure, we can attach the string to clips on the tank, allowing the water purifier to hang off to the side. The next item is to attach the heat exchanger in Venturi. We can tell which way the water flows through the heat exchanger by the directional arrow at the end of the Venturi. Once connected, the water will flow down the heat exchanger and up through the Venturi. We need to connect the input hose attached to the water pump and small end of the heat exchanger. With this connected, water will flow from the pump out of the tank into the heat exchanger. Step 5. Once the input hose is in place, we're going to connect the output hose to the other end of the Venturi in the same fashion. Also, make sure to fasten those hose clamps tightly to prevent leaks. Then once that's finished, slide the heat exchanger into the slot at the top of the chlorinator on the same side as the sodium hydroxide. One of the last two items to add to the purifier is the suction tube, which we will connect to the tube at the back of the purifier. Eventually, we'll connect it to the intake on the Venturi, but for now, leave it disconnected. Using the metal cup from the kit, measure a heaping portion of salt and pour it into the water bottle provided. Then, using contaminated water from the tank, we will add about 2 to 300 milliliters of water and shake well to dissolve the salt in the water. Once the salt is fully dissolved in the water, pour the contents into the tube at the back of the water purifier where it is labeled, pour salt water here. Make sure the water level rises between the minimum and the maximum line. Then, using water from the tank, we need to add water to the purifier on the same side as the sodium hydroxide, making sure to bring the water level just above the minimum line, but below the maximum line. The last step in preparing the water purifier is to hand tighten the cap to the port at the back of the purifier. The next step is to test the circulation and to make sure that the water pump inside the tank is working correctly. Find the small battery clamps that we set off to the side from earlier and attach the black clamp to the negative sign on the battery post, then connect the positive indicated by the red handle to the plus sign on the battery. Right away, you should hear the pump working. This is also a good time to check for leaks at connection points. We need to check for suction at the end of the tube attached to the Venturi. This ensures that there are not leaks and everything is working properly. After determining there is suction, we need to attach the connection tube from the back of the purifier to the suction tube. Now that the pump is circulating, we can attach the large battery clamps from the chlorinator to the small battery clamps. 
Keep in mind that we should not attach the chlorinator to the battery without the water pump circulating first. So we need to attach the large negative battery clamp to the small black clamp on the battery. The red clamp for positive then goes over the top of the small red clamp from the water pump. At this point, the contaminated water from the tank should be circulating through the system. If we want to speed up the electrolysis process, add a pinch of salt to the sodium hydroxide side of the chlorinator. Very soon after doing this, you will be able to see a murky layer form at the top of the water on the sodium hydroxide side. The last thing we need to do is to test the chlorine level in the water. Inside, there is a small sheet with instructions, a blank sheet for a clear testing background, two droppers of ortho-tolidine, and a testing vial. First, we need to explain the scale for testing. The test vial has a color-coded indicator from 0.5 milliliter parts per million to 5 parts per million. Our goal is to bring the chlorine level to 3 to 5 parts per million. As the water gets more chlorinated, the water will turn a darker shade of yellow, and once it's above 5 parts per million, it will turn to a dark orange color. Before grabbing a sample of water, we need to clear out the water that is being held in the bulkhead fitting. Open up the spout and let the water drain for a few seconds, and then collect a small sample of water. Then, taking the orthotolidine dropper provided, add one drop of liquid to the yellow chlorine side of the testing vial. Put the cap back on the vial and mix thoroughly. Once that's done, hold the testing vial to the clear sheet provided to read the chlorine level. Remember that the ideal chlorine level should be between 3 and 5 parts per million. Your M100 should now be up and running. If for any reason it is not, please review all the steps and make sure that each one was completed. If you need further assistance, call WaterStep at 502-568-6342. And to learn more about ways you can help WaterStep provide communities with safe, clean, and sustainable water, visit waterstep.org.